All right, it's been a long time coming. Black vs N, the peak of the black and white arc and pretty much what the whole entire arc was building up to. After tons of comments and poll results, it's pretty obvious you guys wanted to see this battle. So let's get straight into this epic final battle. It's the hero of truth versus the hero of ideals. Let's start things off with section 1, being the meeting of these two trainers. So, on Black's journey to win the Pokemon League, he was just doing his own thing, you know, battling trainers, catching Pokemon, the whole shtick. But throughout this, there's always been one guy, just watching him. Of course, we all know this to be N, but Black has no idea. And just letting you all know, this isn't going to be the only time N's going to be in the stalking business. And although this video is Black vs N, I also want to talk about Black's first encounters with Team Plasma. One night in Accumula Town, him and White find themselves camping outside. Just your average Pokemon journey things. But suddenly they're attacked out of nowhere by something creating holes in the floor. As they can't see what's attacking them, Black decides to lock in, getting his Muna to eat his dreams, allowing him to focus. I'm sure we've all seen this many times, but if you really think about it, that's some next level obsession. Black's dreams are so big, he literally can't think about anything else. So Muna eats Black's dreams and his mind goes from white noise to black allowing him to figure out what the Pokemon attacking them is. Looking at the holes that were left from the attack, he notices that they're a perfect square. And not only that, they were left in a pattern, meaning their attacker isn't just blindly attacking, rather laying something out. And after a quick session of who's that Pokemon, we find out the Pokemon in question being Timber, a Pokemon usually used for construction. Black stops the Pokemon with his Braviary and looks for his trainer, who appear right on time, being two people dressed in uniforms. They apologize for the trouble and explain they have building permits for the property, so they kindly ask Black and White to move. The two trainers comply, but this first encounter left a pretty bad taste in Black's mouth. The next day rolls around and the stage has been built where they were staying. And if you're familiar with the games, you know exactly what this stage is for. The plaza of Accumula Town gets filled up as Team Plasma and his spokesperson Getsis appears. Getsis does his usual talks about how people should liberate their Pokemon instead of keeping them and release them into the wild. After this speech, the people are split in terms of their reaction, with some people viewing it as just another outlook of life, but other people actually releasing their Pokemon. Like this guy just released his Ducklet after knowing it for 10 years. This actually starts to trigger Black as he goes after Getsus, trying to stop him from making more speeches. But White stops him, telling him that it's a free world so they can't do anything about it. And although she may be right about free speech, Black replies with a very fair point, being that the people who released their Pokemon weren't really thinking about their Pokemon's feelings. After being together with a Pokemon trainer for so long, only just to get released into the wild. The main case in point being a Galvantula the two ran into a while ago. This Pokemon was released by a trainer and was on the fence of being comfortable around people, but still aggressive enough to attack. If you think about it, it's kind of like real world animals. You can't just release a lion into the wild if it's been with people since it was a cub. Lack was actually planning on releasing this Galvantula, but after hearing this speech, he just can't do it. Because then it would just be like abandoning the Pokemon twice. Like, you can even see the poor guy shaking and begging to be kept on Black's team. I usually hate spiders, but this fella is just so cute. Suddenly, a voice tells Black that his Pokemon are trying to talk to him. But Black just laughs this off, telling him that that's impossible. And then, the voice suddenly speaks into his ear, telling him that it's sad that he can't hear them. Aight, this is just me. But if a random stranger just starts speaking into my ear like that, they're getting a nasty backhand. And it seems Black agrees, telling the voice to show themselves and stop hiding giving us a perfect segue into section 2, Black vs N round 1. We make a quick cut to White who just had a phone call, and now is coming back to Black only to see our boy getting absolutely wrecked. Like how are you going to let yourself get thrown into a wall like that? It turns out the trainer Black's fighting still hasn't shown himself, instead attacking from behind the smoke screen. White asks Black why he's not just locking in and getting Muna to bite his head. But that isn't working at all, since he already knows the Pokemon and its attacks, but the issue is that the Pokemon's attacks are just so strong that he can't win against them. In other words, he's just not that guy. N then suddenly enters the conversation, confirming that Black can't beat him, and the reason for that is because he keeps his Pokemon inside Pokeballs. Knowing things are getting serious, Black decides to say, screw it, we're bringing out the big dogs, using his level 54 Braviary to protect the gang. N responds to this by calling his Pokemon to his side as well. Black tries to use his Pokedex to get an advantage against N, but he instantly closes the gap between them, grabbing Black's arm, asking him, is this why he imprisons Pokemon? How N keeps teleporting like this, I still don't know. Black pulls back, questioning just who the hell this guy is, and we get our first case of N's rambles. Get used to this segment, y'all, because you'll be seeing it a lot in this video. 
and does his usual preaching about Team Plasma's ideals, but then he brings up some fair points. Saying, if you collect Pokemon in order to fill your Pokedex data, then you're imprisoning that Pokemon for nothing. And I mean, like, yeah, I guess I know what he means. In the games, if you just catch a Pokemon and put it in your box, that guy's just gonna stay there for a while. And then finally reveals his name to Black and White, demanding they hear the voices of their Pokemon. Then he just gets back to fighting like nothing happened. Black starts trying to fight back, telling N that he's sick of him complain. But despite this, Muna ends up going down against Purloin. This guy then turns to White, saying if worse comes to worse, you're gonna have to fight. And yeah, it's a wrap already. Black, you're arguably my favorite dex holder, but this is not the one. If you lose this battle, White is not the one who's gonna be blacking out. It's gonna be you, buddy. White then reveals she doesn't technically own any of the Pokemon she has. In fact, she's never actually had a Pokemon battle in her life. N takes advantage of this confusion and continues his attack on Black, once again forcing him to look at his Pokedex for help. N tells him that he doesn't need a Pokedex. All he has to do is listen to the voices. And because Black doesn't do that, he'll never be able to defeat him. N rambles so hard that he even goes as far as to crying, saying as long as they're living with humans, Pokemon will never be happy. This guy reminds me of Lance, but just 10 times worse. Which is kind of crazy considering Lance tried to commit genocide, but that's another video. And it seems like I'm not the only person getting annoyed as Black tells this man N to shut up. Taking a whole page of space even. With the way this is playing out, it just reminds me of Vegito vs Zamasu. Even with the whole blah 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 thing. Black tells N there's no way his Pokemon are unhappy with him. They've all been working hard towards a dream together. Because they understand each other through their feelings rather than the need to speak. With all his Pokemon agreeing with him. Even the Garvantula he caught earlier officially joining his team and the two even do a little handshake and if that's not clear proof then i don't know what is black continues saying as for the pokedex people want to learn about pokemon because they like them so much that's why the pokedex was created he may not be able to hear what his pokemon are saying but with the use of the pokedex they can still understand each other and with his speech over black sends tepic to showcase his truth with tepic breaking through even time pulse water gun despite the type difference landing a critical blow sending both it and n flying N, like the walking L he is, said that he heard Tepic's voice and never imagined a Pokemon could feel that way. And for someone who talks about hearing Pokemon's voices, he sure doesn't listen well. N then says, I am a head out and gathers his squad so that he can leave. Black then heals up his team and him and White speculate on just who this N guy really is. With Black thinking, he might not be a full blown villain as his Muna saw N's dreams revealing his past. And that wraps up N and Black's first encounter. Honestly, both sides brought up some good arguments but of course, I side with Black at the end of the day. So let's move on to their next encounter. So a couple chapters have gone by and things have been going pretty normal, except for some random Team Plasma encounters. Other than that, the main man N is nowhere to be seen. Black has to go take on a gym battle against Elisa and White's just finished helping set up in Pokemon Musical. And after plenty of days of no sleep, she's understandably super tired and starts heading back to her hotel to rest. But on her way, she bumps into somebody. This person notices she's tired and tells her to take a seat and rest, which she does so. She's then like, Say, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. As she's suddenly up on a ferris wheel and behind her is N, looking like the biggest creep ever. Like, bro, why are you standing like that? Why is clearly uncomfortable and wants to get out of there as soon as possible. But when she looks down for help, she only finds Team Plasma staring right back at her. This is where N reveals that he trapped White here because she got one of their members arrested. And yeah, for all good reason. These guys practically kidnapped her and pretty much are criminals. N also decides now would be the best time to reveal he's not only a member, but is in fact the king of Team Plasma. I know most of you are here for battles, so I'll spare the details of N's expedition dump. To summarize real quick, White and N have a debate that doesn't go too well for White since N was kind of right in a way. So Tepic betrays White leaving her to fall out of the ferris wheel and N makes the big claim that because he can hear the voices of Pokemon, he will be the one to defeat the Pokemon League and its champion. After this, we see the fraud himself looking serious for the first time in history, crossing the sea with his Bufalan. So, you know things are about to get good. Black meets up with White again and after figuring out it was Team Plasma who did this to her, Black finally snaps, getting sick of everything that Team Plasma have done, like attacking them, stealing from the museum, hurting Victini and a bunch of other stuff. So we jump ahead a ton of chapters to Nacreen City's museum being under attack once again. This time, it's not one or two Team Plasma members, instead a whole army of them, trying to steal the Darkstone and awaken Zekrom for N. But the gym leaders of Unova, as well as Black, aren't gonna let that happen so easily, as they fight against Team Plasma, with Bryson especially popping off against the Shadow Triad. 
But because of his display, the Shadow Triad are like, yeah, that's enough of you guys. And the sky starts rumbling with thunder and lightning. Black heads outside to see what's going on, only to see the forces of nature pulling up. These guys waste no time in dismantling the gym leaders, and Black tries his best to help out, with Pig Knight even evolving into Emble. But against legendaries like this, simple evolution isn't going to be enough. The rest of Team Plasma come outside and report that the Darkstone is nowhere to be found. Lenora then reveals that the key to where the Darkstone is being held has been destroyed, and even with legendary Pokemon, they won't be able to break into it. So now with no way to get the Darkstone from the museum, Team Plasma head out with the gym leaders all captured. Well, all but one, because Bryson once again shows off why he isn't like the other gym leaders, revealing that he slipped away whilst Lenora distracted the Shadow Triad. So him and Black discuss how they can get the Darkstone from Lenora's basement, with Black realizing that the way to enter the basement is by undergoing the gym puzzle, just like he did before. Black does hesitate, however, as if the Darkstone was being kept in such a safe place, then what's the point of even breaking it out? But Bryson insists they retrieve it. So the two go through the gym puzzle once again and find the Darkstone. Suddenly, a new voice comes from behind and Black turns around and... Yeah, getting electrocuted by Electros like this is definitely brutal. So, turns out this guy ain't Bryson and is just a regular Team Plasma member who can disguise himself. And that Electros belongs to one of the Seven Sages, one you know very well, being Getsis. Getsis thanks Black for his naivety and heads out, whilst Black just collapses. And now the Dark Zone has fallen into the hands of the King of Team Plasma, N, who shows the true power of his ideals, releasing Zekrom into its true form. And damn, I know he's the villain, but this shot looks so, so cool. So, Team Plasma have everything they need. All that's left is for N to defeat the champion Olda and crown himself as the strongest trainer in Unova. All hope seems lost, but never doubt the absolute goat that is Bryson, who gets us with another double fake, as he generally did manage to escape, replacing his body with an ice sculpture. He heads down to where Black is and understands the situation, contacting Drayden, the other remaining gym leader. Team Plasma may have been smart, but what they didn't realize is that inside the very same room that held the Dark Stone, also held the Light Stone giving our heroes a fighting chance now that they have the Dragon of Truth by their side. Out of nowhere though, the stone rolls itself over to the unconscious Black, making Bryson realize what must be done. In other words, it's training arc time. So, Bryson takes Black away to the Tubeline Bridge, where he undergoes a grueling training session along with meeting Iris and Drayden, the latter of the two telling him he needs to become the truth to fight against the ideal, which means absolutely nothing to Black. Once he completes his training, all that's left is for Black to defeat Bryson in a gym battle. During said gym battle, Black asks Bryson what exactly did the gym leaders want him to do, as they've trained him and told him to become the truth to fight the ideal. And with the two of them deciding things for him behind his back, it's seriously starting to tick him off. And in fact, the whole time he's been feeling the presence of something that Bryson has on him. So Bryson's like, oh whatever, might as well tell him, and explains to Black about the two dragons of Unova the Black Dragon of Ideal, Zekrom, and the White Dragon of Truth, Reshiram. And with Team Plasma owning the Black Dragon, they want Black to own the White Dragon. And after feeling a deep fire burning within him, Black accepts to be the truth of Unova, with his reasoning being very simple. If N wants to become strong enough to beat the champion, and he wants to beat the Pokemon League, and also the champion, then that means he'll also have to become stronger too. And if N has Zekrom, then he'll have Reshiram, so everything will be equal. So, Bryson hands over the Lightstone to Black and warns him, the battle ahead could be one where the dragon rejects Black's truth. And with that, Black defeats Bryson and calls upon Reshiram. But things aren't that simple. And Black decides he'll just have to wait till Reshiram is ready to come out itself. So now all that's left is to defeat Drayden in the gym battle. However, the Pokemon League is scheduled to start in only one week, meaning he may have already lost his chance to enter the Pokemon League. So his only choice is to rush to Drayden and challenge him to a battle. Whilst Black's been training, we can't forget about the other star of this video, N, who's also been going through his fair share of hardships, trying to get Zekrom to join his side. And on Route 6 of Unova, we see Marshall and Aldo discussing about the soon-to-come Pokemon League, when suddenly they see N and his full team, Zekrom included. N challenges Aldo to a battle, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of the Pokemon League in Elite 4, but oh well. The battles are decided as a four Pokemon each double battle. During their battle, the two talk about their beliefs, with N telling Alda, using moves that deal recoil damage means that you don't care for your Pokemon. But Alda debates back, saying that Bufalan uses this move because it has full trust in him as a trainer. 
but debates don't equal the battle as Alder shows why he's the champion, having both his Pokemon target N Star Manitan and taking it out, giving him the advantage. Alder questions N if Team Plasma is why the gym leaders disappeared and if he's part of them, which as you know is a big mistake as it gives N a chance to ramble. After rambling, he sends out his Zoroa. And although the battle's getting good, we have to make a quick cut. Black and Iris have just reunited with White and the trio hear the sound of a Pokemon battle nearby. When they go to check it out, this man Older is already on the ground. Like Zoroa just got sent out and he's already on the floor. Older gets back up saying that if he was in his youth, he would have been able to dodge the attack. But oh well. But at the same time Older, you dodging the attack isn't a problem. It's your Pokemon. In the time that it took the other guys to get here, you're already down to one Pokemon. So Older sends out his last Pokemon, Excelgore, who manages to take down Archeops, but that's not really that much of an advantage. Since now, N has to send out his final Pokemon with everyone thinking it's going to be a Zekrom, with the Life Stone even reacting with Reshram trying to attack, but it gets sucked back into the stone. N tells everyone, you may be thinking my last Pokemon is Zekrom, but that isn't the case, as my true final Pokemon is GG, the traitorous Tepig White was taking care of. Please understand, this is a champion level battle, and N's really going out there with a Zoroa and Tepig. N decides to fully violate Older as his Excelgore gets speed blitzed by Zoroa and Tepig. I know I keep going on about this, but please understand, this Tepic had never been in a battle until it just joined N. But now, it's not only being used to outspeed, but defeat the champion's Pokemon. Like look at Excelgore, looking up at his trainer, only for it to be Zoroa's illusion. Older went out sad here, and if we look at N's team, we got Darmanitan, a solid Pokemon, Archeops, not too bad, but then he really said, I don't even need Zekrom to win, and sent out Zoroa and Tepic. This is the most fraudulent display of a champion I've ever seen, and I know Cynthia and Steven would not stand for this. Heck, let's not even limit it to the manga. Even Jita wouldn't stand for this. Look at N2, saying, y'all see this right? I just beat the champion. This guy's a fraud. He then goes off on his usual ramblings, telling White, see, I was right. If you let Tepic fight, it can become strong. He offers to return the Pokemon back to her, but White declines, telling him if Tepic wants to come back and perform in shows, it can come back itself. But if N gets in her way, she won't be afraid to throw hands with him. N holds her, saying that she finally understands his ideals of letting Pokemon be free. But Black's not gonna let him touch his girl. I mean, boss. Black ain't gonna let him touch his boss like that. And N, like usual, is like, I, I'm a head out. Then seriously, out of nowhere, nowhere, Professor Cedric Juniper pulls up, saying, no, you can't let him get away, and tells Black and White, if they wanna save all the gym leaders, they need to jump this guy right now. And all I can think of is that one clip from Boondocks. He's still alive? No, no. Normally I'm against jumping, but in this case, getting rid of N here would truly be a blessing on the world. Cedric also reveals that the starter Pokemon we're seeing, being his Samurott, the Servine who was with N but now with White, and Gigi the Tepig were all starter Pokemon owned by him, just like how professors all own three of the starter Pokemon to give to new trainers. One stormy night, N pulled up to his lab and just released all the Pokemon, with Tepig running away, Snivy following him, and Oshawott staying with Cedric. You know, just casual thievery. N prepares his rambles again, but this time he actually kind of cooks, specifically at Professor Juniper. On the day she was meant to give away the starter Pokemon, the Pokemon were nervous and worried. Instead of focusing on the Pokemon, she just took a phone call. Because of this, the Pokemon got into a fight and Tepic caught a cold. And when it came to delivering these Pokemon, she didn't even go deliver them herself. Instead, treating the Pokemon like items and getting them delivered like it's Amazon. Like bro, this is the only time he's ever cooked and he left everyone speechless. It's actually kind of crazy. N says, this time for sure, I'm out of here. But Black stops him, telling him if he's going to Team Plasma's headquarters, he's going with him to save the gym leaders. But N tells him, you're really going to try fight me after seeing how I washed the champion and you haven't even got eight gym badges yet? And even Black's Pokemon are like, yeah, this ain't it, chief. Black tries to get Muna to eat his dreams, but Muna rejects this, as the only thing inside his head is the thought that they can't win this. N finishes Black off by telling him that Muna doesn't want to eat his dream anymore, as it doesn't taste good. Its flavor has changed, and the only reason that it stayed with him in the first place was because his dream tasted nice, and now that his dream tastes bad, it no longer has a reason to be with him. And as Muna flies away, Black's dream finally starts to crumble, as N takes his leave with Zekrom. So from this section, N got Zekrom, washed the champion, and Black got his dream crushed right before his eyes. After what happened with Muna, Black pretty much just says, Go on, what? What am I fighting for? 
and prepares to head back home to New Vemmer Town. White tries to tell Black not to give up on his dream, but Black explains all he ever wanted to do was win the Pokemon League. But instead, he got dragged into something way over his head, like with Team Plasma and the Legendary Stones. And to make matters worse, he didn't even manage to get all 8 gym badges. And he sees that the Pokemon League opening ceremony is playing on the TV. Black's feeling pretty heavily down, but that's when you get reminded. This isn't just any old story, it's a Pokemon one. And the rest of Black's team all appear and show that although Muna may be gone, they're still here and willing to fight by his side for their combined dream of winning the league. And after a beautiful double page spread and a newfound resolve, Black heads straight to Drayden and challenges him to a gym battle. As although the ceremony may have begun, the league doesn't begin until the next day. So it's battle time once again. This time we have Drayden vs Black inside a corridor of all places. And not only that, Black only has 15 minutes to win. In the fight, things aren't looking good as Black's not in his best mindset without Muna and Drayden is a strong trainer. But suddenly, the battle gets interrupted by Caitlyn of the Elite Four. She uses her Govatel psychic powers to connect Black to the minds of the gym leaders who were captured. Every single one of them remind him that in their gym battles, he always managed to find a way to come out on top by believing in his team. So now with a full team of hype men backing him up, Black gets up again to fight. This time, targeting a window and unleashing a cold air into the building, as Drodigan's main weakness is the cold. If its body temperature gets too low, it literally can't move. So Braviary takes a chance and finishes things off. Black explains he had to make a risk since his Braviary was also weak to the cold. But it paid off as Black managed to defeat Drayden and make his way to qualify for the Pokemon League. I'm gonna end this section here and skip practically over the whole Pokemon League since we spent enough time to the build up. To summarize, the Pokemon League takes place in a similar fashion to the anime, a tournament style battle. And in this tournament format, the final battle is a Team Plasma manipulated Cheren versus Black. I'm 100% talking about this in another video specifically for Cheren, as he's really a great side character. To summarize, the two trainers fight fiercely with Black barely coming out on top. The two then get covered by Mist as they fall asleep, both reminiscing about when they were younger and their dreams. In this dreamscape, it allows Cheren to return back to normal and resolve the issue. This Mist actually turns out to be Dream Mist, caused by Mushana, who's returned to Black, now fully evolved. And now that he has his full team back and Team Plasma has crossed enough lines, like stealing Pokemon, manipulating his friends, kidnapping his boss, and so many, many more crimes. Black finally has enough resolve to awaken Reshiram from the Lightstone. So now with Reshiram by his side, Black arises. Team Plasma's castle erupts from the ground and end appears with Zekrom. Team Plasma fill the castle as spectators from the crowd and people Black met along his journey fight below. The two dragons fly above the league and prepare for their battle once more. This really feels like a battle between two heroes. Black feels the pressure of the abilities of the two Pokemon and N warns him if he doesn't listen to his Pokemon, he'll be crushed flat. Reshiram goes on the offensive, comboing Zekrom but to no avail as it's not working side by side with Black. Black speaks with Reshiram, trying to understand why exactly it chose him. Zekrom's tail starts to charge up electricity as it unleashes Fusion Ball right onto Reshiram. Black falls down to Reshiram's tail, which starts to heat itself up. After a bit of help from the Pokedex, Black learns about the two dragons and their types. With him understanding when Reshiram's tail lights up, that means it's angry. You may be wondering, why am I explaining all this? Well, if you remember from the start, Black said he will bond with his Pokemon through the use of the Pokedex. And after reading through its entry, he truly understands about the two Pokemon. Zekrom works with N because he has an unbending ideal, and Reshiram chose him because of his truth. Now fully in sync with Reshiram, Black charges in, and we finally get to hear more of N's rambles, this time realizing that Black is finally able to hear Reshiram's voice, meaning he's officially the hero of truth. The two dragons continue to battle with Zekrom once again going into overdrive state and unleashing Fusion Ball. After fighting for a while, Black notices three things. One being he can't afford to take any more damage like this. The second being Zekrom can't continuously unleash these attacks. And the third most important thing being that if he unleashes Fusion Flare directly after N unleashes Fusion Bolt, he can land a devastating blow. All that's left is to sense when N will attack since he never calls out his attacks to Zekrom. So, Black and Reshiram wait until they hear the sound of Zekrom's tail, and once he hears a spark, they go on full offense, with a super cool double page spread of Reshiram dodging Fusion Bolt and landing a direct hit on Zekrom. Zekrom plummets to the ground as Black and Reshiram share a smile. Alright, so far so good, but the battle's not over yet, since N didn't do all this just to lose to a one attack. Zekrom dashes away whilst Black tries to chase after him, but they get stopped by the Elite Four. Here we get an explanation of why Muna left him and why it came back. Turns out, the reason why Muna left was because it wanted to find a Moonstone and evolve in order to get stronger for Black. So once it got one from Caitlyn, it came back. In other words, Mr. I Can Hear Pokemon was literally just hearing what he wanted to hear, meaning he's the truest fraud of them all. Elsewhere, White meets with Concordia and Anthea, who tell her about N's backstory. 
When N was younger, Getsus exploited his ability of hearing Pokemon's thoughts and got him to only hear the thoughts of abused Pokemon for years, which is honestly another level of messed up. Like, it's 2023. By now, we all know Getsus was the main villain and N wasn't really evil. But when you're proper deep in it, this man Getsus was another level of evil. And in fact, N was actually heading down the right path since he even released all of his Pokemon, telling them if they find someone they truly like, then there's nothing wrong with staying with them. Damn, man, that's a pretty sad backstory. You got some good character development. But at the same time... We do not care. We're here to see this guy get beat the hell up of. So let's get back to the battle. Black and Reshiram successfully chase down N and Zekrom. The Reshiram gets caught with a mean left hook, like something you'd see out of boxing. In fact, it got hit so hard, he and Black started seeing two Zekroms. But Black and Reshiram weren't the only ones seeing it, as even N and Zekrom were confused by this. So Black takes the chance to finish things off with a Dragon Pulse, sending both Zekrom and N flying. Those of you with keen eyes will notice this is exactly how their first battle ended. The second Zekrom then reveals itself to be the Zoroa that was always with N. Even though it got released, it came back to N because it likes him, as Black explains. And that brings this battle to an end as N falls asleep and Zekrom is down. The rest of Black's team come over to his side and Black is to properly reunite with Musha. Alright, real quick side tangent. Have you noticed how all Pokemon protagonists wear hats and all the rivals don't? But then N came along, wearing a hat too, like he was part of the club. And every time he fought Black, he would always make sure his hat gets blown off, like he's trying to steal the title of main character from him. But Black never backs down and always puts it back on, even when he's at his lowest. But when Black beats N in the final battle, N's cap gets sent flying, almost as if he's saying, nah man, I was always the true main character. I'm probably reaching, but at the same time, it's a pretty cool detail, isn't it? So everything's all good. Until the menace to society Getsis shows up, calling N pitiful. Getsis pretty much just comes clean saying, yeah, I'm evil, this whole thing was a facade. He then starts violating N and after all the setup they did, he just went and lost. So he'll get the job done himself and kill Black, surrounding him in flames that keep following him wherever he goes. Getsis' Pokemon all start going kind of crazy on Black's, since his whole team was built in order to defeat Black. Getsis keeps going, telling Black, because you beat N, now we gotta go and lie to everyone, since we can't have the hero lose. Black starts to get annoyed at hearing Getsis talk and decides it's time to lock in, just like old times. With Mushana eating his dreams and figuring out how to take down all of Getsis' Pokemon, showing us why he is the real champ. Getsis just tries to simply walk away, but Black blocks off his exit, telling him this is where it all ends. White enters the scene and N wakes up, allowing the three trainers to finally have a conversation. White thanks N for helping her understand what Tepig wants and Anne realizes having a conversation with Black and White like this is what he should have wanted for the whole time. Black says everything's good with him, as he tells him that he knew he was never a bad guy since he saw his dream in the Dream Mist, and Anne reveals that he started doubting his ideals ever since he met Black and traveled Unova, and finishes off by explaining he'll never be able to understand Pokemon like he does. So now he'll have to go on a training arc, as Anne runs away and Black tries to chase after him. A beautiful sight if we ignore the fact that he's a criminal. Even if he was manipulated, Anne will be sitting right here on the table, Along with pretty much everyone in Team Plasma, but the table's not big enough for that. Instead, we'll add along Getsis, because he's about to commit the worst crime in the world. As Reshram starts getting reverted back to its state in the Lightstone, Black realizes this and tells White we gotta move back, as what he's feeling now is the exact opposite of when Reshram first awakened. But Getsis is like, nah buddy, you're not going anywhere, as Black flies towards Reshram due to Behem's psychic. Then he uses Teleport, telling Black he'll never see him again. And unfortunately, I think we all know where this is going as Black gets absorbed into the Lightstone as it flies away. So Black did win the battle, but at what cost? All right, geez, this was a super long video. When I was making it, I had originally planned to talk about N vs Black's battles exclusively, but I ended up just including all the stuff that gave him a reason to fight and important character moments for them. I hope you all enjoyed and I'm sorry this video took so long to come out, but yeah, as usual, make sure to like and subscribe for more Pokemon Manga content. Let me know what battle you'd like to see next. With all that said and done, take care and I'll see you all in the next one.